I'll be showing nine new features in Microsoft Teams meetings. Teams is always updating and improving their meetings capabilities, so let's get started. The first feature that we're gonna show is the new reactions in Teams meetings. So here's how it works. Anyone on the screen can show an emotion reaction. So Adam, it was so awesome how you just did the Flipgrid virtual bus tour. Congrats, that was an amazing work that you did. And yeah, that's, that's great. So there we go, you know, we see the thumbs up, we see the heart, Tess is clapping. So you can go right here on the menu and you can choose any of these different reactions. The other one, it's right next to raise hand. You can still do reactions while you're having your content presented. So who here is a fan of Saturn and all the rings of Saturn? I know I'm a fan. I'm gonna give myself a reaction. Yeah, I, I heart that. So you can see the little reactions appeared across the bottom of the content while it's going and you can see the reactions on the right hand side at the same time. So whether the people are open in the panel on the right or it's closed, you can still see those reactions. If you want to disable reactions during your meeting, that's possible too. So I'm gonna open up a meeting here and click edit and I will click on meeting options. You can see right here, there is a reactions switch and I can turn that to no and then no one can give reactions during my meeting and that will be disabled. So another second feature that we just updated was the ability to have a shortcut to raise your hand. So now instead of clicking, I can do control shift K. So I'll do control shift K and you can see my hand just raised right there. Sometimes you forget to lower your hand. I've done that sometimes. Control shift K, we'll do that really quickly. The third new feature is the view switcher. So I'm gonna share my screen really quick here. Yeah, it's exciting, Adam. Now I'm in the presenter view and you can see there's this new view switcher. Up in the upper left, I drop this down. You can now see all the videos across the top. So here we go, you can see everyone. If I drop this down, I can even choose together mode and watch this. Now we're in the coffee shop together mode, all five of us in the upper left, and you can still see the little circles over here. So it's kind of fun to have together mode and I can still see the presentation. I'll go back to the view switcher and I will go back to gallery. The fourth new feature is the ability to remove the notes and the slides along the bottom when you're in presenter mode like this. And this has been a top request. I have my deck here in presenter mode and I will go to the three dots menu here and I'm gonna choose hide presenter view. When I click that, you'll see all the slides along the bottom have disappeared and on the right hand side, the notes are gone. If I wanna turn that back on again, I click the three dot menu and I choose show presenter view and they all come back. There's also a keyboard shortcut to turn presenter view on or off. So I'm gonna use the shortcut key, Control Shift X, and you'll see that all of the slides along the bottom and the notes went away. So the people who have requested, hey, I have a smaller screen, I want more space, but still being able to see the video, there you go, you have all of that. You know, I can still have the participants open or closed. The fifth new feature is the ability for me to turn on high contrast mode, in this case as a presenter. So I will go to the dot, dot, dot menu and you're gonna see this new option, view slides in high contrast. Let's say I'm a presenter and I need to have high contrast to make sure I can see the slides a little bit better. I turn this on and you can see it immediately changes all the slides, including the slides below. What you're seeing here is that I'm the presenter, so I'm seeing these. All the people here don't see the high contrast. Now, in addition, if there was a student or someone else viewing the slides on PowerPoint Live in Teams, they could turn on high contrast individually for their own slides. So it's very personalized and differentiated. Only the people who need it can turn it on, but it doesn't apply to everyone else who's looking at the deck. The sixth new feature is clicking on your Teams calendar to create a meeting. So I'm here in my Teams calendar. I'm gonna go Tuesday at 1.30, just highlight and click. The meeting opens. It's a simple one, but it's very effective. The seventh new feature is response options in your meeting. So in this case, just like in Outlook, if I drop down response options, I have the same two I have in Outlook. So if I want to disallow forwarding, hey, maybe this is a top secret meeting, and I'm going to send it to Alex, but I don't want him to forward it to anyone else, even in his Outlook, I just uncheck this, and then when I send it, he won't be able to forward it. The other response option, which is a nice one, sometimes you send a meeting and you're like, I don't want the whole world to accept and decline and me to get all those responses as the organizer. If I uncheck request responses, now when the person responds, they won't have the option to send me a direct response. So let's see what that looks like on the attendee side. I'll send this to Alex. I'm signed in as Alex. And first off, I'm gonna try to accept the meeting and I'll hit yes. And you'll note, 
When I hit yes, it doesn't ask me to edit a response or send a response back. So that is the request response disallows that. Now, Alex is going to try to forward this top secret meeting because he doesn't realize that it's top secret. So I'll go to my calendar. Here's the top secret meeting. Let's open it up and I'll drop down this arrow to forward it. Oh, it is disabled. I can't forward this meeting because the organizer disallowed it. The eighth new feature is a new option in meeting options that lets you say only people who are invited directly to this meeting can bypass the lobby. So what does that look like? Well, I'll open up my top secret meeting here and I will click edit. I will go to meeting options right here and I'm in my meeting options and you can see who can bypass the lobby. If I drop this down, you're going to see a new choice called people I invite. So in this case, if I invite Alex and Ella specifically with my meeting, and this only works for private meetings, doesn't do channel meetings at this point, only those people can bypass the lobby. So now when I hit save, we'll go back to the meeting. So here's my meeting and I'm going to invite Ella Taylor to this meeting as well. Now when I hit this send, only these people can bypass the lobby. Anyone else who attends this meeting has to wait in the lobby, but these two special people, my special friends, Alex and Ella, they can bypass the lobby and not wait for me to admit them. The ninth new feature isn't really a demonstration, but it is a number. And what we're doing is we're increasing the number of people who can attend a regular Teams meeting, like a private meeting, to a thousand people. That is a big increase from what it's been in the past. That's gonna be rolling out in the month of March. One note on this, this does not apply to the A1 free subscription for Office 365. This only applies to the A3 or A5 subscriptions. And if you're an enterprise, that would be the E3 or E5 licensing. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you wanna keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.